prayer and giving alone will not make you experience wealth and riches. There are things you have to do as a person. For example, the Bible says that whatsoever it doeth shall what? Prosper. What does that mean? If you are not doing anything, there's nothing God can prosper. I don't know if you heard me. If you're not doing anything, there's nothing God can prosper. Because sometimes I get very sick and tired of churches that the only thing they teach is give and give and give and give. And the reason why is this. When they keep giving, they don't have. What are they going to give from? And some people say, take a loan to give. That's crazy. In the scripture, giving is based on what you have, not what you do not have. So when we teach on finances, it's very powerful. And, and we'll, I'm going to learn from you. are going to learn from We're going to look at the word of God together. You know, do you have the picture that we use as a flyer? Do you have the picture? I want to show you. Because this picture is a typical Lagos, is a typical person, is, a, is sometimes the typical person that you know. I don't know if you have the picture. I want to show you the flyer. It's a very good flyer. I, sh- I think you should share it even though the series is not, is not over yet. I don't know if you have it. Glory to God. Second Kings chapter 4. Do you have it? I'm trying to see if they can get it for me at the back. Look at the, the, the picture. Salary 300k, girlfriend allowance 200k, rent 2 million, more medical bills 200k, loan repayment 500k. This guy is not stable. But all of you, but that's how many people are. And with the introduction of these loan companies that are destroying your finances. You need to ask yourself when you take a loan, you need to ask yourself something. Every time you take a loan to buy liabilities, to buy airtime, to buy phone, to buy what's not bring your money, you have lost a lot of money. And they will tell them, hey, just take 100,000. You just pay back. What do you pay back? You say, pay back 10,000 at the end of the month. Do you know the percentage of return that is? Do you know how many of your life you need to work to get 10,000? You, as a person, every month you earn 100,000. How much do you make in a day? You work for 20 days. You earn 100,000. Divide it for me. 5,000 per day. So, two days. Monday and Tuesday you go to work. You earn 10,000. Someone else says, for borrowing you 100,000, give me two days of your life. But because it looks like small money to you, you make those terrible decisions. Write this down. The bad financial choices of today reflects tomorrow. Write it somewhere. And I'm not talking about personal finances also. I'm talking about people that run businesses. The bad financial choices of today will reflect tomorrow. So, your financial condition of today is a function of what happened yesterday. Glory to God. I said glory to God. You need to pray for my voice. We still have one more service to go. So, 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 1. So, what I'm teaching about in this series is closing the financial gap. In this series, you're going to learn, number one, what mindsets that are affecting me. For example, when you see the picture of that guy, the guy has a mindset problem. Number one, if you live above your income, there's something wrong with the way you think. Why do people live above their income? They want to show who they are not. It's a simple thing. The people that show the biggest wealth are the poorest. Some of you, if you go and see the richest man in Africa, which is Zangote, literally you could dress more expensive than him. There are some of the richest in that country. They just went white native. And they wear shoes. Maybe what is expensive is a wristwatch. But you? Ah. It has to blink. The name has to be heavy. It has to be LV, Louis. It's okay if you can afford it, but why borrow if you cannot afford it? So they look at your glasses, Gucci. They look at your watch, Rolex. They look at your bed, LV, your suit, Armani. They type Prada. How much your bank account? Zero. (laughs) 
One time, one lady came to me and said, Pastor, I just need money for I need capital in my business. And she just came. I just looked at the back of my tape. It was an LV bag. I looked at the shoe. It was an LV shoe. I looked at the glasses. I said, yeah, pray. I said, how much is capital? If I can even get like two million to start with. I said, you have it. He said, where, sir? I said, all this thing on your body, is it not the capital? <laughs> it is a capital. Can I be honest with you? Some of you at your level, you have no business entering cabs. I'm telling you. Have you checked how much you spend on cabs? When cab is taking 50% of your income, do you work for Uber? Praise God. Someone says, Pastor, can you say that? That's so insensitive. The reason why is that when I was growing up, I went to the face. When I bought shoe, I'll put soap protector. The reason why I used to walk. That time our church, I mean, the Pagada church was there. So, you know, I used to do a lot of spiritual work in Unilag. So I would just walk from Unilag gate. Sharp! Walk to Unilag. And I turned into prayer walk. So as I'm walking, I'm building my spirit, man. Some of you don't have financial problems. You're the one that is putting yourself under financial pressure. Then when we finish service in spoon feeders those days, they will say, what do you want to eat? They say, rice and chicken. I say, me, rice and chicken. I could not even have, they say, our church was in an eatery. I could not eat the eatery's food. Because Listen to this. Life is in faces. Men are in sizes. Know your size and live your size per time. Then you will have no pressure. Know your size and live your size per time. So, when we finish service, Bagada, bah! My parents' house that I was staying in, I used to in Antonio in Solo, but Solo was the major place. I'll just look at the money. It cannot carry me that way. Hmm. I had to discuss shortcuts. So once you just cross Bagada Bridge, you enter Shomolu. If you enter Shomolu, just walk through some corners like this. You'll get to Jibowu. You know how you get there. If you know what I'm talking about, let me see. Eh. You know the road, Rabbi? Eh, because you've done it before. You know, because it's just, you just enter. Once you enter from Lanade Awoloku, just enter. Bass! You just enter like bam, 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 bam. Sharp. You're in Jibowu. From Jibo, you just cross over. You enter Moshe Lassa. What? It's far. Sometimes you have to walk for wisdom to enter. Yeah. Praise God. That's the truth. Some of you, too much comfort has not allowed you to develop. That's the truth. Too much comfort has not allowed you to develop. And someone says, how can I be ashamed of it? The pain was part of God's process for developing me. Have you not seen people that have no job that want to go on vacation? May you not have visions that will swallow your destiny. He said, I'm, the girl has no job, oh. I'm just, this Lagos stress is too much. If I can just go on vacation. Yeah, if I can just go on vacation. You know, say you're tempted. You are the one that is tempting yourself. Because when you have no money, you're doing vacation. Satan will bring you someone that will take you on vacation to sleep with you. Uh, whoa. Praise God. One time, we, myself and one of our leaders, um, Taiwan Olaja, went to a suit store. He said the story many times. So it was, he had told me that some of the suits I used to preach, that they are not contemporary, that, you know, because this was the early days. So I used to have just two suits. I would just match them, match them, match them. I said, Pastor, no matter how much you match them, we know the suits. <laughs> so we went to this suit store. It was on Allen. Allen was the like premium place that time. I don't know if it's still like that now. So I went to Allen. 
So what, I, I said, what one suit? Three pieces. It was light brown. This thing just marked me. Bah! I, that was it, Pastor. This, I, I, I saw it in the middle. That's the Pastor, this is your size. I said, that's good. I removed it. When I went, I said, how much this suit? When they said the price, I said, it's not my size. <laughs> Tao, Tao looked at me because he thought, Pastor, why are you lying? He said, but you go, I said, that there are two kinds of sizes. There's physical size, there's financial size. I said, it's my physical size, but it's what? Not my financial size. What kind of life makes you buy credit on credit? What kind of life makes you buy credit on credit? If nobody will advise yourself, you can't talk to yourself that you're on the path of financial destruction. Even angels know you're owing. They will not start sending text to people. They, they will not use your name. Lapo has HIV. Avoid her. And it's people that you owe. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say I will make adjustments. Adjustment. As you are here right now, you mean God cannot say so 10,000? Why will you so? Any money that comes, death is waiting for it. I don't do beyond what I can do. You know me I don't. I don't prove to be who I am not. So I humble myself so that God can exalt me. The only car you have, if they break the light, you cannot fix it. Praise God. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 1. The Bible says this, And they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Thou knowest my servant did fear the Lord. And this is why I'm teaching this. Yele, I wish you can ex- help me explain that. This is why I'm teaching this is this. When Christians eventually have financial issues, they feel as if God has forsaken them. You could hear the tone in her voice. She was crying. She was emotional. I say, what is it? I, I tightened, I gave, I prayed. I did next level. But we're in debt. And since as a pastor, when you hear the story, there's a lot of emotion, but you can see the gaps. They feel, that's why on social media, a lot of people are angry against God. Only that they cannot tell this God they're angry at. So it's even of God they take it out on. You know why you cannot see God? Or be angry to God. You see his men. You deal with them. And the reason is this. Because they feel as if we fear the Lord. We did everything. How did our life turn out better financially? Pastor, did you come? I've done this before. I'll do it again to help you understand. Pastor, you go to the back. This will change, this alone will change your perspective to finances if you get this. Walk to me. Was that easy? Yes, that was easy. Go backwards. Stay on one foot and come to me. Uh huh. It's taking some time, it's slower. Was that easy? No, sir. The problem with finances for Christians is this. You don't realize that there are two legs to finances. There's a supernatural leg that is prayer, confession, fasting, giving. There's another leg that is value creation, policy thinking, product development, work. So most Christians are working on one leg in their finances. That's why they are shaking, go back and walk, go back and walk, go back on. See why they are shaking? They are working on leg of prayer. Yeah, they are working, you see? You see, you see, wiggy, wiggy, wiggy. They are panting, they are panting, they are panting, they are panting. They can't balance. The question is that what leg are you working on in your finances? There are two legs the supernatural leg, and what? The natural leg. As I wake up in the morning, man, take a plush kapaya, pray for NLP. Then I go and there's something to do. That's why when you join in the prayer, we pray responsible prayers. Have you noticed? You don't hear me say, oh yeah, take money. Oh yeah, receive money. How? (laughs) 
Will it jump from head and come into your hand? What will I say? You are going to pray that God will show you profitable opportunities. Because the prayer makes you take responsibility. Stop praying prayers that makes you irresponsible. Anyhow you do it, Lord, Chacha, bless me. What's anyhow? Is that not why people go and take bribe and say it's a blessing? Is that why people sleep around and say it's a blessing? There are two legs to finances. There, there, is a, there is a spiritual leg and there's a natural leg. You know, I'm saying so because some of you, you're very strong on the spiritual leg. And what you have to get is the what? Natural leg. And some of you are very strong on the natural leg. What you do, I'm not going to say what, is a spiritual leg. Thank you, sir. And that's what this teaching is going to, this teaching is going to teach you what you have to do spiritually and what you have to do what? Naturally. God doesn't give cash. He gives power to get wealth. Let's read in the Bible. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. See what the Bible says. Can we read together? I want to go. I want us to read together. I want to go. Can we read as if we are alive and strong? I give one here that yes. Yes or no? Yes. Want to go. But thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee power. Does he give you wealth or gives you power to get wealth? Power is the word ability. It enables you with ideas, with concepts, with what? With knowledge to get wealth. So every time you are praying for wealth, what God is giving you is the power to get wealth. How does the power to what comes? It comes in ideas. It comes in relationships. It comes in wisdom. This is why we miss it. Because you see, God, why are you looking at me like this? And God says, I've given the power to get wealth. So the question is that, what are the ideas that God has given you to get money that you have not said it's working on? Get the microphone. Let's ask them. What ideas have God given you to create wealth that you have not begun to work on? If you have some ideas already, raise up your hands. And if you have made money from your idea, what idea did God give you that brought you money? That what you're going to do, you were afraid, you didn't think it was great, but brought you money. Allah, you want to say something? Yeah, give the, what idea did God give you? Where's the microphone? Give it to him. Yeah. Give him the microphone. Yeah. What idea did God give you that helped you in business? Go, yeah, give it the microphone. Just give it to him. That you, yeah. <laughs> when you were a student, what did you do? Please, you need to hurry, Allah, please. Thank you. Many things. Many things. One? Dry cleaning. Dry cleaning. Fantastic. McDonald's. What? McDonald's. You went to work in McDonald's. What else did you do? Postman. Postman. At some point, you were selling clothes. Did you sell clothes or wristwatches? I sold clothes to small. You sold clothes and wristwatches. Because you're a man of style. Look at him. He, he knows style. So we're like, okay, I have the ability to be able to pick the right clothes. Then all of it, I don't know how to wear clothes. He'll come and what? Sell it to you. Look at the glasses. Did you sell glasses? Focus on the glasses. Did you sell glasses too? Microphone or like quite quickly. Did you sell glasses? Stay on him because he needs to answer me or else I will not go. Did you sell glasses? I use the microphone. Small. <laughs> and you know in life, you know in life, he that is faithful in little, before in much. Now, he, he, he runs a business and I, I mean, I've been to his office to pray over their new office and I see many staffs working with him. But it didn't come from many staff. It started by selling glass. This business that you need 50 million to start, are you sure it's not a trap? Because any business you want to start, you can start with a smaller vision. Praise God. I said praise God. At some point in my life, I was selling furniture and I was a pastor. I was selling furniture. I sold to state government, I sold to banks. I was a pastor. 
What have I not sold? I've sold shirts. I've sold Christian books. I've sold furniture. The reason why is that I would rather do that than beg. And I know that people do extreme things because they need money. Very extreme. I don't know if you watched the video three Sundays ago in the fourth service. As we're talking, a lady ran out because one lady was talking about how she had challenges and how the message helped her. And then ran and hugged her. He said, thank you for letting me know that I have hope. And I said, what's your story? He said, my parents need 500000 to pay for their rent. He said, this lady just encouraged me that I don't have to do the wrong thing. I said, what wrong are you planning to do? He said, I was planning to go and sleep with someone tomorrow to get the 500000 to pay the rent. Ha! Ah, but that's a normal story. He just chat with that. Ah! Because we love hypocrisy, right? Ah! Praise God. I said, praise God. So, the first reason is this. Why am I stuck financially? That's the first reason. Why am I stuck financially? I wanted to see something here. Let's, let's learn from this widow woman. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 1. Now they cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet and said to Elisha, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest my servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born, born men. And Elijah just said to her, what shall I do for you? And he did not say she had no answer. One of the reasons people are stuck financially is that there is no financial clarity or goal. Let me ask you a question. Is there a place you've written what your financial goal is this year? A lot of people don't have what their financial goal is this year. And once you don't have a goal, there's nothing to work towards. The Bible says where there is no vision, what happens? The people perish. Once there's no vision, the people perish. The second thing I wanted to see is this. He says, what shall I do for you? The woman had no answer. The second thing he says, tell me what you have. And, and that's very powerful. He said, tell me what you have. The first question was about the goals. The reason, second reason why I stuck is this, the mentality. The mentality. Because there's a scarcity mentality and there's an abundance mentality. See what the Bible says here. He says that, he says that tell me what you have. And the woman said, thy servant has what? Nothing. Why? scarcity mentality always focus on what they do not have this is how you hear it I, if i had money if i knew people if i ha was abroad if i was living in lagos if i was if i was leave it you are not where you are there's opportunity look for it scarcity mentality is always focusing on what is not available so when you find yourself focused on what's not available Remind yourself of falling into what? Scarcity mentality. See what? He says, what do you have? And she obviously had something, but there's a way scarcity doesn't help you see it. The question is that, what mentality are you, do you have today that is blocking your finance? Look at that guy that earns 300,000 naira and has girlfriend allowance for 200,000 naira. What will make a responsible human being think? That I have loan. What kind of girlfriend are you dating? That you have to sustain now with 60% of a salary. Someone says love is stupidity. How do I know if your brother do, if your brother does it, will he encourage him? If your brother, if your brother does does something, will he encourage him? If you are the girl receiving it, you will see nothing bad in it all. But if the person is your father or your brother. It's going to be a problem. Some of you girls are dating people. You need to encourage them to be intelligent. In fact, they'll be like, ah, your own case is different, so why do you talk like this? You know, like, you know, they'll be different. When I said preaching, there's this guy known now called Ouch. Ouch was not, because he was in our church, he was playing the bass guitar. I used to sew shirts. He used to sew. He was my tailor. He used to sew the shirts. Two five. If I have one of his shirts, I kept it just for the future. I said, as your brand goes big, I'm going to sell this shirt for very big money. So that you can see one of your premium shirts that you, were, you made yourselves those days. But look at the one. 
there was a mentality. The question is that what mentalities, how is your mentality keeping you down financially? And this is how it keeps you down financially. Because you have scarcity mentality, you say things like, it will not work, it will not work, then you do nothing. What are, the, what are some mentalities that people have that affects them financially? I'll give you some examples. Number one, there's nobody that will help me. Who said that? That's what you think. Someone said, I've spoken to a lot of, okay, who thinks that way? Wave your, wave your hands, let me see. Yeah, give her the microphone. Just give her the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. The two of them are friends. They sit down together. They think together. They sit down together. Yeah. Give her the microphone. Yeah. Give her the microphone. Yeah. Take the microphone. So you think nobody was going to help you? Yes, sir. Oh, that's fine. Give it to your friends also. So you think nobody's going to help you? Mm-hmm. What's, what, what's, is that your ask also? Mm-hmm. Okay, let me ask you a question. Why do you think so? I may probably ask for help. trying to raise about three or four million and yeah nobody was there to help you yeah and someone made a statement no 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 don't worry don't worry about what they okay. made nobody was there to help you yeah yeah how many people did you ask maybe like five well those listen, are the people financially stable around me listen now. all the businessmen are lying are laughing because people in business know for you to get funding maybe into ask about 20 people to get a yes but doesn't it depend on people you know? But you attend this church. Are you not in a cell? I just joined. You don't go to cell. No, I just joined. I just you just joined. joined. But the way you were before. <laughs> because look at the verse 2. Look at verse 2. I want to look at verse 2. Because you are like this woman. Oh, you will see her. You, you, also, you are from the same mother. You will see her. Look, look, see. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 2. Look at, it. look at verse 2. Look at verse 2. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 2. Can you have verse 2 on the screen now? Read, my sister, your microphone. Read for me. Please, can you put verse 2 on the screen? DJ. Second Kings. And they're always quick to remove it, but to put it back is always a challenge. Okay, you have a Bible with you? Read from your Bible. Second Kings chapter 4 verse 2. Hope you know she didn't say five. You say around five, which means there are three or two. <laughs> uh-huh. Second Kings chapter four verse two. Yes, yeah. And Elisha said unto her, uh-huh. "What shall I do for thee? Uh-huh. Tell me. Yeah. What art thou in your, in the house?" And she said, "Yeah. Thy handmaid had not anything in the house. Okay. Save a pot of oil. Continue." Then he said, go borrow the vessels abroad. Did you see the other resource that she had that Elijah pointed out to? He said, there are relationships in your life you can borrow from. Go and connect to them. Go and connect to them. He says, he says go borrow vessels from your neighbors. Question, this church is a resource to you if you can join a cell. I'm telling you, I mean, you know, I lead a cell and they were saying within the cell, some people have done transactions of almost two or three billion within themselves. Because you're the one that thinks you don't. So that's why I asked, I said, the way I know around me are the people that I ask. I said, but you attend the church. And let me say this to you. The reason why she never got help was this, that mentality that there's no one to help me. You don't know why? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So once you say there's no one to help me, you will not see the people around you that can help you. The people you will see are the people that are not willing to help you. And once they don't help you, you now experience what they call the law of self-fulfilling prophecy. That uh, I thought so, and it didn't happen. It's called the law of what? Self-fulfilling prophecy. Exactly what you thought happened to you that way. They love people to help me. I thought you would say, there are a lot of people to help me. A lot. So the question you want to ask yourself is this. What mindset do I have that is holding back my finance? So my sister, your mindset is that there's no one to help you. What should your mindset be right now? I have help. Exactly. I have obtained help. You, oh my God, you're so brilliant. You have what? Obtained help. Do you know by this conversation alone, some people are going to come to meet out their service. What exactly do you do that can invest in? 
Tell me what you think. I make shoes. No, no, no. What do you think? Do you think some people come and meet you and ask you? Do you think so? Yeah. Exactly. Because you have what? Help. Because I know I have help, I begin to call it. I begin to receive it. I have help. Uh, can I talk to the ladies? Ladies, don't take this personal. Don't take this personal. The mindset that nobody can help you that's sleeping with you. That's why you attract people that will sleep with you to help you. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You have to do without that kind of mindset so that you can begin to accept helps without sinful attachments to it. How many ladies have been helped and it was not sinful? Raise up your hands, let me see. Raise up your hands, let me see. Look at all your hands up. You, you can't be the only one that will not receive favor from God. You are not that terrible, are you? Praise God. So the last thing I will say is this. Someone says, so how do I increase my income? The first thing is to solve problems. Money is a reward for those that solve problems. That's the last thing I'm saying and I close. Money is what? A reward for those that solve problems. What problem do you need to solve? Go to the car park. Sir, I notice your car is very dirty. Do you mind me coming to the house or coming to your office and wash it for you every day? If that's your level, you just solve the problem. Ma, I noticed that you are, you are quite busy. Do you mind me going to the market to shop for you and come? Ah, Mr. Shiofakorede, I, I noticed that you like style. Do you mind me shopping for you in London and bringing it back to you? Those are problems. The question is that what problem can you solve? That someone can pay for. Someone says, and if you run a company, how will you increase the value of your company? By solving bigger problems of your customers. Oh, our company builds. But we can solve more problems. When people build, they're looking for furnitures, they're looking for this. We also can solve that problem for you. We create another avenue and make more money there. So people buy and they want to sell later. Oh, you can sell back to us and we'll sell it for you again. So you grow the capacity by solving problems. How many of you problems are coming to your head right now? Don't run away from problems. The reward of problems is what? Money. David became a national hero not because he prayed. Because he solved what? A national problem. Look for some big problem and solve it. And you'll be on your way to stardom and greatness. I see you going far. I said, I see you going far. Amen. Can I tell you what I believe? Very soon, when you say you are broke, there will be 100 million in your account. Amen. That will be your broke. You say, ah, I'm broke. It will be 100 million. Anything that less than 100 million is broke. If, if I, the one I'm talking to say, I receive it. Amen. Very soon, when you say you are paying tight, it will be 50 million you are paying. You know. Very soon, when you're paying staff salary per month, 250 million. Yeah. Staff salary, 250 million. Yeah. The amount has begun to reduce. Yeah. Praise God. Stand up and let us pray.